log x, which is the, the log curve you had before, and I've got 1 over x, right? Like I'm considering this as the product of something and the reciprocal of something, okay? I generally find that a lot like, you know how I said addition is easier than subtraction? Well, multiplication is like 100 times easier than division. So let's have a go at this. Now, um, easy things first. I've drawn this left-hand branch of 1 over x, but of course it doesn't matter because... It's outside because it's outside the domain of log x, right? So since I don't have both of them, it really doesn't matter. I can ignore that, okay? Now, the second thing I notice is both of these graphs, both of these graphs do not exist at x equals 0, okay? Now, um, I wasn't going to um, make a big deal out of this, but I got a great question before which highlighting the fact that I should make a big deal out of it. I just have a hollow circle here, right? Because it, it doesn't exist. It's outside the domain of log x, right? But I'm not going to put a hollow circle on this graph. In fact, I'm going to put an asymptote. Now the question is, how do I know that this one has an asymptote, but this one just has a hollow circle? Anyone want to have a crack? Yeah, there's. Is it because um, this one approaches the y-axis? Okay, um, it does. It does approach. Uh, you've got this one approaching the y-axis there, you've got this one approaching the y-axis. So there's clue number one. Both of these are asymptotic to x equals zero, so therefore you, it's reasonable to assume the whole thing is. Okay? But there's another more critical reason. Okay? Jan, do you want to offer something? <coughs> Very good. It's all about the ordinates. Okay? So let me try and explain this, unpack it for you. Right? Um, no, sorry, I'll come back over here. When you see something, like we've seen functions like this, We've seen these for ages, right? And you've kind of just been used to thinking, oh, it doesn't exist, therefore there should be a vertical asymptote there, okay? But that's not the conclusion you should always draw, okay? These have vertical asymptotes at, say, x equals zero. And the reason why is because exactly what Jan said, what the ordinates are doing. If x equals zero, I can't go there. Do you think about what happens when you get very close to x equals zero, right? Now, when you get very, very close, like, say, x equals 1 over a million, or 1 over a million million, or something like that, then this denominator getting very small makes the whole thing get huge, right? Tiny, tiny denominator means the whole thing is big, right? That's that climbing, that asymptotic behavior you're used to, right? You're going to go, whoop, there we go, I'm going to approach from one side, and then of course when you're getting to negative small values, you approach negative infinity, okay? But there's no such thing happening here, right? As x just gets closer and closer to zero, there's no, there's no climbing off to positive or negative infinity. He just gets small and then stops existing, right? So this doesn't give you an asymptote because you're multiplying. This gives you an asymptote because you're dividing, right? And when very little numbers are on the denominator, that's, that's what they do, okay? <coughs> Very good. So I've got that piece. That's nice. Are there any other easy values I can get out of that? I'm looking for roots, right? Because if either of these have roots, then the whole thing should have roots, right? So that's where log x has an intercept. So therefore, 0 times something should be 0. Okay, you're right with that? So I've, I've got that. That's an easy point. Okay. <coughs> now I've got to work out what's happening on the outsides, and this is quite hard, okay? For instance, here's something I could do. Um, I'm guessing I'm coming towards the asymptote here, and that's easy. I know that positive times negative will be negative. So I, I know I'm down here, but question, am I, uh, I'll use this color, am I going to be above the log curve and going towards the asymptote? Yes. Or am I going to be below the log curve and going towards the asymptote? It's not immediately obvious which one it is because they're both approaching the asymptote, okay? Now just think for a second, before we jump out of an answer, okay? There is actually enough information on here to tell me whether I'm below log x or above log x. And again, it has to do with the ordinates. The question is, which ordinates? Raf, do you want to give a suggestion? Hold on, which do you think it is? It's going to go above. This one? Yeah, that's because the one on x graph is greater than one above. And therefore, if you take a large number and you multiply by a fraction, it's, yeah. it's always bigger than the um, fraction that you multiply by. Okay, all right. Your logic is so very, very close. It's very, very close. In fact, it's the opposite. Let me try and show you why. It's, just, it's like a negative sign, okay? I'm sorry, you are very close. He is on the right track. Now, think about this, guys, right? It's all about the ordinates, right? And I'll let me try and make this a little bit easier for you and just do the visuals, okay? Right here, 
I'm at one, right? Now I'm thinking about what's happening to the left. Well, to the left, what are the ordinates like? Are they bigger or smaller than one? Answer, they are bigger. That's what you meant to say, okay? Now when you're multiplying by a bigger number, I've got like some negative value here, right? Well, when I multiply that negative value by a number bigger than one, it gets more negative. Do you see that? Like for example, here at x equals a half, I'm going to be at two, right? So if I'm at two here and I multiply by some number down here, I'll be twice as negative, right? So it's more, well, it's more negative. It's lower. Does that make sense? So it's going to be, at this point, it's going to be steeper. Okay. So in fact, I'm getting this guy. It's pretty hard to draw it accurately because you've probably got your log curve already quite steep, but your composite has to be steeper. Okay. Now, I wonder if therefore you can draw a conclusion for me on the basis of the argument I just made. I said, look, I've got the log curve and I'm multiplying by numbers bigger than one. So it gets more negative, more whatever it was. Okay. What's happening to the right of one? Because like the gradient is getting lower, it goes like less than one. So that means that it approaches a stationary point. Okay. Yes. The answer is yes. I didn't draw my conclusion that way. Okay. I'll see if I, because I'm, I'm not, I, maybe it was really obvious to you. It, that did not seem as obvious okay. to me. Okay. Let me try and explain the way I logged it out and came to the same conclusion. Over here, I'm multiplying by big numbers, right? So that's why it gets more negative. But in here, I pass a threshold. This is what Raph was talking about. Now all of these numbers, all the ordinates to the right of here, they're like, uh, you know, there's one, and then there's nine tenths, and then there's seven eighths, and then they all, they're all getting smaller, right? So therefore, these numbers, when I multiply them, will make them less than the log curve. Does that make sense? They should all be smaller. Okay? So I'm getting this kind of behavior. Okay? Now, then comes the next question, right? If I'm under the log curve, do I stay under the log curve and just kind of grow like well log curve grows slowly right and increasingly slowly. does this guy just grow super super slowly or does he turn and come back to the axis now how can you work out which one it is okay if you knew how to differentiate log functions you could differentiate okay and you could find what the new is doing and that would work and it will work eventually but we have better tools that we have access to or I should say simpler ones firstly before we go to the hard way Let's go to the easy way, okay? Um, you have this thing in your bag, which is really, really good at dealing with big numbers, right? And that's what I'm trying to work out what happens over here, right? Like what if X is 100 or 1,000 or a million, okay? Now, when you put in here, that's right? Really tiny. Log 1,000 divided by 1,000, right? I've got news for you, you can check it out. You'll get very, very quickly. Well, you want to go and check it out? <laughs> What kind of numbers are you getting? Yeah, you're getting super tiny numbers. Like you're getting close to zero and you're getting close pretty quick smart. So you're going to get this kind of behavior. It's asymptotic to y equals zero. Is it because like this graph is approaching zero? Okay, now, 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 okay, now, okay, so then the question becomes like, but why? Is it just because this guy's coming towards zero? Yeah, because anything times zero... Like, well, let, really let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If I asked you to graph... Just, just humor me for a second, right? If I asked you to graph this, right? And you think, oh, I'll just do the components, right? I've got x cubed, and then I've got 1 over x. And look, this guy's approaching zero. So the whole thing should approach zero, right? No, well, decreasing. no, because of this guy. Right? Now, what you've got here, and this is the crucial bit I want you to understand, is you have this interplay between someone who's increasing and someone who's decreasing. So the question is, who's pulling harder? Right? Is the log curve increasing faster than, one, than the hyperbola is decreasing? Which one is going faster? And there's a really easy way to show you which one wins. Okay? Let's think about 1 over x. Okay? 1 over x looks like this. Now, if you multiply 1 over x by just <coughs> x, just the straight old linear function, okay. you guys know what happens when you multiply x by 1 over x, right? What do you get? You just get a horizontal line. Do you agree with that? Yeah. You get this guy. Okay. So what I take that to mean, even though it doesn't look like it, is that 1 over x and x, this is increasing, this one's decreasing, 
and they are pulling at exactly the same rate. Does that make sense? One's increasing at exactly the same rate that the other is decreasing, which is why when you put them together, you get a net change of zero. They're just like locked in a tug of war. Are you okay with that? All right, now think about one over x and compare it to log x. Now, tell me, from here and here, which one's pulling harder? The linear function, after I get past here, right, the linear function is pulling harder. Do you agree? Right? And it has to pull that hard to make it even out. Well, what's the log curve doing? He pulls harder for a little while and then he just like gives up. He just gets tired. He slows down. Right? Do you see that? <coughs> so therefore, if these guys are exactly locked and this guy is weaker than this guy, then clearly 1 over x is going to pull harder. Does that make sense? He's decreasing faster than log x is increasing. Does that make sense? Do you see the visual argument that I made? Okay, it's almost like you're putting things on a scale. If these guys are equivalent and this guy's worse, well, this guy will win, right? So that's why I'm decreasing. And that's how you can make this argument that you're hitting down, okay? Later on, you'll learn how to differentiate and you'll find that stationary point and you'll say, well, it's a max. You can determine it quite easily. Then, like, will that graph, like, is it one that approach, like, the green? Oh. Okay, yep. So if I continued my log curve, right? Uh, sorry, my hyperbola. Remember how we said all of these hyperbola values, they're all fractions, small fractions. I should say proper fractions. So that's why I'm always underneath this um, log curve. But in the same way, this log curve, right, it's always bigger than 1. You see that? Like, I, 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 sorry, it's, gonna, it's always going to pass 1 and it's never going to come back. Okay? So therefore, you're always going to be above. The hyperbola, you're always going to be between them, okay? But I know now, based on this argument, that it's going to drop towards the asymptote. Oh. Okay? And then what did the asymptote be like, the t 1 over x, the 1 over x curve? I talked about this before. If I'm approaching 0, and 1 over x is approaching 0, I might as well just say I'm approaching 0, right? Like they're both asymptotic to 0, so therefore I don't need to put in an extra curved one to make it more complicated. Okay.